Hey guys, it's Joe and Leah here from Let's Head Wherever. We're getting settled in our first couple of weeks of full-time RV living. And we just wanted to go through some of the rig upgrades that we have done over the past couple weeks to prepare us for full-time RV living. So one of the first major overhauls that we did was in our bunk room because we were panicked about storage. Like, where are we gonna put all of our stuff? Uh, so what we did is we basically took the bottom bunk in our bunk room and turned it into storage because in the back of it was complete dead space. So we ended up utilizing nearly all of the storage room that was just wasted underneath that bunk. And now we put all of our winter clothes and items that we're not going to need for a long time. So mostly all of our seasonal stuff will be under there and out of the way. Uh, as an added bonus, we had Ikea storage containers that fit absolutely perfectly in the new bunk It was like room. they were so meant <laughs> to be in there. While we're in the bunk room, the kids actually put all of their clothes in the drawers down below and they had a huge storage cabinet that was pretty much empty. Uh, for our trips in the past, we honestly just kind of had stuff shoved in there, wasn't super organized. So it's maybe not the prettiest organization, but we were able to find plastic totes and filled up the entire closet area with plastic totes, which really enabled us to put a ton of stuff in there in a really organized fashion so we know exactly where everything is and we can find it really easily. Yeah, and the good thing about that too is in our bunk room, the storage area that we're talking about is pretty tall. So I'm 5'11", and Colby's probably next in line about 5'3", and nobody else can reach that high. So we just put some of the stuff that we don't maybe not use. That's true. Before that, we didn't even yeah. use the top shelves because I couldn't reach them anyway. Yeah, everything was shoved in the first like <laughs> this much of the cabinet, and then up it was like cobwebs and nothing was going on up there. So at least now we utilize the yeah. entire storage area. Like the stuff that you don't need all the time that you want to have with you just in case. Yeah, because I'm leaning right now. <laughs> the other thing we really spent time doing is thinking about anything that could make our life easier. So we wanted to make sure that part of this lifestyle change was that all of our free time was spent in a meaningful way. That when we weren't working or schooling or cooking or cleaning, that we were being intentional with our time and we were enjoying the places we were traveling. So we really mapped out everything we were doing on a day to day basis and thought, how can we save even a minute or two at a time? in normal life. It basically comes down to the philosophy of why we're doing this. Like this this is the whole reason we're living in our RV now is to live more intentionally and meaningful. Right, so, so I know it sounds silly, but even things like the rolling cart for the washing machine takes two or three or four minutes less to do laundry and it's a whole lot easier. The kids can be more helpful with it. It just makes it more manageable it. because before, I mean, it's about a 40 pound washing machine. So now I just unclip the rollers and put it in the bathroom and hook it up and we're ready to go. So it's a time saver. Yeah, makes it a lot easier for traveling also. Um, the guitars. The hanging we, the guitar. We might have four guitars with us here in the rig. If you're watching our previous video, I did not win that fight about the extra guitars. <laughs> Uh, but previously they were sitting on the floor in the bedroom, which was not the end of the world for a long weekend or even for the 50 day trip. But when we thought about permanently living and never being able to walk around my side of the bed, hanging the guitars was a big deal. And it gives us a little bit more floor space. We have like pretty much no floor space in our master bedroom. So recapturing that from the guitars just makes life a little bit easier. Absolutely. Uh, something as simple as a TV being mounted. Uh, in the kids' bunk room, the TV just kind of sat on the counter. So anytime we were traveling, they would have to pick it up and lay it on the bed. Uh, now it's mounted to the wall. So we don't ever have to do anything with it. It just sits there. So that's just one less thing that the kids have to worry about. And on that note, we never had a TV in our master bedroom and it never really bothered us but the TV mounting place in our room is not in a super convenient place and we don't really love it. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw on Facebook, someone had put a projector and I thought that was the greatest idea. And we got a steal of a deal on Black Friday. Well, I was still in the mentality that projectors were like really expensive, yeah. but you can, we got a 1080p. It's not like a, you know, it's not like a horrible quality projector. We got a 1080p projector. It was on sale. It was like 78 bucks or something like that. So you can't be, you're not even gonna buy a TV. No. For 78 bucks. So it was awesome. So now yeah. the entire wall of our master bedroom can be covered up with a screen and we have a projector. Yeah, and we mounted it right above our heads and shining across the room onto the wall. We got it come with a massive, like big, it's, it's cool. So it's really cool if we want to watch TV and the kids are sleeping and we don't want to bother the kids or something like yeah. that. So we're really enjoying that even though we didn't think we needed it and we never thought we'd buy one. It was a uh, totally worth the 78 bucks or whatever it was we paid. Absolutely. And just like the TV being mounted in the kids' room, we tried to think of anything that could save even just a couple minutes when we were packing up or uh, getting down. ready to travel for tearing down. 
um, that's kind of the most stressful time. And if we're trying to see the whole country, uh, we wanted to make sure that that was as painless as possible. I think we've done good with getting that process yeah. easier, but we wanted to see if there was anything we could do ahead of time to make it easier. So we got slide toppers installed, a uh, little less worry about getting up and blowing off all the slides to make sure there's not leaves and stuff. Um, and an unintentional benefit that I hadn't even considered until we had them. Like last night, we had a huge rainstorm come through. And especially in Colby's bunk, Colby's on the top bunk, and the slide's like right above her head. And it really, really dampens the noise from the rain like hitting and stuff like that, and like leaves and acorns hitting. Um, and then also the heat. Especially, and we're not going to spend a whole lot more time in Florida, but when it gets hot during the summer, I mean, sitting on the couch underneath the slide, it it gets warm so hopefully it'll kind of dampen the heat a little bit and the noise has been fantastic and saves me some time cleaning i know that you're supposed to be really religious about blowing them off before you leave but that's possibly something i regularly forget so i'm regularly cleaning acorns and leaves off of the living room floor and now we don't have as much to do and then we also got the uh, steady, steady fast, fast stabilizers put on which we really love um we we're using a pin stabilizer up front and a bumper, bumper stabilizer, stabilizer in the back. And we still had a share and X shocks. And we still had some movement. Yeah. Um, so the steady fast just makes it easier. It's three quick turns and we've got the same amount of stabilizing as we had with all those three uh, stabilizers before. So we probably won't use the X shocks regularly now yeah. unless we're gonna be somewhere for a long time. And we actually gave away the pin stabilizer. So hope you're enjoying it, Stephanie, uh, because it was, we don't have that much space for it. So it was kind of nice to get rid of that and have the steady fast instead. And it made a pre pretty significant difference. The first time I was about to try them on, I, I went outside like pushed on the side of the rig. And I mean, you could just me, I know I'm very strong, but you can move <laughs> the whole thing. And then I, man, I tightened those three things down. And it was, it was like pushing on a wall. It was kind of nice. So there is a little bit of movement still. Cause I mean, like, it's, it's a fifth wheel, it's gonna move, but it's not every time somebody walks up the stairs, we're not, you know, like we're on a cruise ship or something like that, you know what I mean? So. Not anymore. Not anymore. The next thing we tried to think about was how to make it home. Again, even when we were in it for 50 days, it was always like a temporary thing. So we didn't have a lot of decorations up, we didn't have a lot of like home touches, and it has never bothered me in the past, and I'm not a great decorator, uh, but we did wanna make sure that we had some of the comforts of home so that it really felt like a place that was home. home. Kinda is now. Yes, yeah. it's still a little weird. Uh, so that's we got this nice fireplace going in the background. <laughs> <can't we? laughs> Over the fireplace that's yeah. actually underneath it. But, yeah. um, so like Joe put up LED lights here <laughs> that he's really enjoyed changing for What's every that? occasion. Well, I mean, you know, it's the Gator game. You got to make them orange and blue. It's Christmas. We got them going red and green. The kids have them around their TV. We got them around <laughs> the island. I mean, we've got LED lights everywhere, basically. It's going to look a like a disco hall. Yeah. for movie night called Cinema Settings. Ooh, we got that, Cinema Setting. You got to <laughs> go. customized. Yeah, the very, very low yellow lights, you know. So. We brought little touches from home. Put a couple extra pictures on the wall. Little couple plants, little plants from home. and stuff like that. Only plastic ones. Yeah. I'm going to tell everybody that the plastic ones are, you know, because we're living in an RV, but the honest answer is I couldn't keep them alive. We kill everything. Even we, in a house. We've so. managed to kill cactus before. <laughs> uh, stuff like uh, Christmas decorations. We put, you know, these little boats. Just, I don't know. It's it's home. So we, especially when we first moved into it and you're kind of going through that like homesickness and like the like you know the 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 weight of what you're about to do is kind of hitting you it was nice to you know put out some christmas pillows and bows and stuff everywhere it just kind of you know i don't know it just kind of eases the emotions when uh when everything was going down and i know it sounds silly but yeah. the little plastic plants came from our house so like they remind me of yeah so we do have house. some things from the house yeah and some of the decorations are you know from the house and stuff like that but it's it's cozy. One of our biggest uh, obstacles that we have is, you know, like dust and dirt and sand that gets tracked in through our shoes and everything else. So, you know, we were, we have a place to put our shoes and we're not wearing them, but you know, if we're going to be coming in and out, we were just kind of laying them next to the door and then stuff gets everywhere. So we actually went and we got these little like trays to put our shoes in now. That way, hopefully all the sand collects in there. We can just kind of, you know, throw those in the garbage and yeah. dust them off instead of having sand everywhere, which is really nice. I know I sound like a hypocrite because I tell anybody who will listen, the Ikea trones in the hallway are yeah. the absolute best shoe storage and I still stand by that. They really are great. But we do end up with flip-flops standing yeah. right next to the door. When not, it's not practical out. to have to go up into the hallway and grab shoes if, you know, especially like coming if you're going to be coming in and out over and over again. So it's nice just to lay the, the trays there. They collect all the sand. You can dump, dump that out, out and then go and, <laughs> and then uh, rock and roll again. Because if you have not spent a lot of time in an RV, the one thing I was most surprised about is the amount of sweeping. There's yes. like lots of sweeping every single day, lots of dirt. And, so the shoe trays have been a real help. And Fred is a shitty beast. So it's we could probably 
vacuum and sweep and mop like 10 times a day and there'll still be hair everywhere. Probably. So. But the shoe trays have really helped with that. Yeah. I think we mentioned it in one of our older videos, but we got a bigger garbage can for the kitchen. And I know that sounds silly, but when you're living in it full time, That's luxurious. that is a game changer. We have to empty the garbage half as often as yeah. we used to. And if you've got to walk to a dumpster or you've got to, you know, be in drive to a dumpster yeah, in some places, works. you know, it's really been a lot more convenient. And then kind of an added bonus we took the previous kitchen garbage, brought it into the it's just, it's just bathroom went, it just garbage. Went down the line. It was like hand-me-down <laughs> garbage cans, you know? So now the bathroom garbage is a lot more usable. And then the tiny little garbage can we had in the bathroom has been used for cleaning supplies. So yeah. when we were just in it for weekends, I had all the cleaning supplies in the kitchen. And then if I needed to clean the bathroom, it was usually just at the beginning or the end of a trip. I just bring the cleaning supplies in there. It's a whole lot nicer yeah. living in it to just have extra cleaning supplies. And living in, in it bathroom. now, we have more cleaning supplies and more cleaning utensils, I don't know what you want to call them, but you know, it's just, we, we have more cleaning stuff because I mean, this is our house now. So we needed a place to keep those not under the sink and you had you needed a Ziploc bag and like air fresheners and Febreze and everything comes up with it. So now we can at least consolidate somewhat. Yes. And this may sound silly. I, I mentioned, <laughs> I, I say this a lot, I'm a big guy. I, I, I accept who I am. You know, if you've never sat on an RV toilet seat as a large gentleman, you're lucky. Right, because they we, we we put a real toilet seat on our toilet. I was I was scared. I was scared to <laughs> so, fall off of it. So we had previously replaced the <laughs> toilet seat it came with with a slow closed toilet seat yeah. that was easier to clean, and that was a huge improvement. It was nice, and it was great, but mm -hmm. not, perfect. not perfect. It did not fit perfect. Yeah, it was weird. It was kind of a weird toilet seat, yeah. and it was something we just put up with. Yeah. We tolerated it when when it was just four or five days or over the summer knowing that it was just a month and a half and then we were going back to our house. It is possible that somebody here that is not me snapped. I threw a mantra. <laughs> I threw a straight up mantra. I'm like, I'm tired of this toilet seat. And I just, I got in the truck and I went to Home Depot and got a new one. I was all done with that toilet seat. And I am the first to admit. Kids are laughing at me. I had a mantra. Totally fantastic decision. It's a great decision. Now the toilet seat fits perfectly. And it is so much easier to clean. It was the best $26 I've, it was the top 20, $26 I've ever spent. But it sounds silly, yeah. but anything that makes you more comfortable makes a really big difference when you're in a 300 square foot place all day, every day. Yeah. Which brings us to our last note. Um, over the summer when we traveled for 50 days, we weren't really working. So we were doing a little bit of work here and there, but nobody was working full time and the kids were not kids in school. Kids were out of school, so. So that's a big change for us. And we're trying to be really mindful of embracing this lifestyle, but also making sure that work is successful. Yeah. And we don't mean just having a school and work environment where we can do the job on the road. We want to make sure that we can all really thrive in what we're doing with school and work. You need to be able to do your work well. Whatever your work is, you need to be able to do it. Not just get by. Because at the end of the day, like I keep saying, like this is our house now. This is where we live. So like we can't just be okay. Yeah, we don't want to count stuff. the days until we're done with this. Like this is right. supposed to be an adventure. So our first thing we had to tackle was internet. Internet. Internet was a huge, uh, a huge thing. And of course, you know, you go on YouTube and you look up RV internet and there's a million videos. So we actually went with a system that was recommended by Chad over at Changing Lanes. Uh, mobile must have, if you're interested, check it out. I'll put a link in the description. We'll do a whole other video. On It'll, it, it is, it's a standalone video. I, I won't do a standalone video. <laughs> I'm just going to share Chad's video because he knows way more about it and he's extremely thorough with it. Uh, essentially, we, we bought a bundle from mobile must have. Can I interrupt for a second? Absolutely. So we did probably together 30 plus hours of research. If not more. And the end result is we just bought what they said to buy because I should have they just were done, right. I should have just done that. So my suggestion, if you're looking for the best internet, if you want to do all the research so you feel better about it, that's what I needed to do. Go for it. But there's a pretty good chance you're just going to write the check and do yeah, between, between what they said to. They have two videos now. One's older, one's newer. And then the Mobile Internet Resource Center has amazing rundowns of like the best They're data awesome. plans. It's, it's a really good channel. If you haven't watched them, go check it out. But at the end of the day, we just went with one of the ones that was recommended. We bought the bundle. It's expensive, right? Don't you'll, you'll have a little sticker shock. But at the end of the day, to not have to worry about it. I mean, it took my buddy Shane and I minutes to install the antenna. I mean, you got to drill a hole. I was a little scared. Drill a hole in the roof. You mount the antenna, you run the wires in, you screw them in. On the bright side, if you messed up, we have to get a new roof anyway. So. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to have to reinstall it all over again. 
Uh, no, but honestly, the interface is super easy to use. And we were up and running, I mean, from, from start to finish, drilling the hole before like the internet was running was less than 30 minutes. So it was super easy set up and now we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, so we've been really happy with it. And the other worry was where to physically work. So yes. having four people working, um, the first thing I found is that I really like to move around. I don't like to work in just one yeah. place. Um, and the biggest key to that was extra screens. Again, I know it sounds silly, but working from a laptop instead of a desk where you sit every day. Yeah, especially a small laptop, because you know, Leah's got a Surface, I have a MacBook 15 inch screens, you know, you're not gonna be a whole lot of effective, especially, you know, Leah's line of work and, teaching you're gonna have six different windows open with different you know you're gonna you're gonna need two screens so we actually got some of these portable monitors that are i think they use them for like gaming systems and stuff like that like kids can bring them with them whatever i don't know but you just hook it up through you know USB C or mini hdmi and you got you know it's, it's like a 15 or 17 inch monitor next they're awesome. to you. It's they were super cheap. They are- Yeah, it's like 120 bucks or something like that for them. They fold just as compact and yeah. even lighter than the laptops or the MacBooks. Uh, so they're perfect. They've really been able to let us be a lot more productive without taking on any extra waiter space. Sorry, I'm moving <laughs> Fred away. He's doing it again. He's like, oh, I see you guys are recording a video. I'm gonna go ahead and eat. No, wait, Freddie, we're, we're almost done. Can you, just give me like three minutes. We're wrapping up. Do not know? worry, he's not starving. We did go to the vet the other day before we hit the road and I was coached not so gently on his weight. So he's not gonna starve to death. The vet is probably grateful that he's being denied food. Fred right is now. very comfortable <laughs> living in the RV so far. He's having a great time. He's gained like six pounds. So yeah, uh, extra screens. Internet's fine. We got some portable tables that we can move around that are, you know, like 30 by 24, enough for the computer, the monitors, the mouse. We have a full size one so you can sit yeah. on the couch and work. We have little um, short ones that are good for a lap or sitting on the bed or sitting at the table if you mm -hmm. need a little extra space. And then we just play musical chairs. If, you know, Leah needs some privacy because she's going to be on phone calls, she'll go in the bedroom. If you don't need privacy. We kind of work out here that way. We're not feeling lonely and you know, we can get each other's company for a little bit while we're working, but you when know. the weather's nice, sit outside at the picnic table. Yeah, absolutely. Work. It's nice. So yeah, make sure you have a nice, comfortable place to work. You want to do your job well, you don't want to get by. And of all the things that we still have a ton of extra stuff that we haven't got rid of, it's like office and work stuff. Yeah. Because I just don't know. I'm still kind of emotionally attached. Like what if I need some of these things? So I've got a whole stash on the side of my bed of like potential work things that may help like yeah. extra mice and extra keyboards of which we have not used a single time, but my, just in case. My gelling Ziploc bag of cords. I'm like a cord, Does every man have that even in an I'm RV? Like a cord hoarder. That's what I have in. Yeah, I don't know why. Like I might need this USB cable that I haven't used in 10 years. You know? But we made a pact that will be stationary for about a month. And we made a pact that after the first month on the road, any of those items we haven't used they're gonna go. They're gone. They gotta go. Make room for new cords. <laughs> <laughs> no more cords. So that's our latest and greatest list of rig upgrades for our full-time RV living adventure. If you wanna follow along with us, we are getting ready to head off on some amazing adventures over the next year. I'm stoked. I hope you're stoked. Hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, leave a message. We look forward to having you guys along for the ride and can't wait to share everything we're about to do. We'll see you guys next time.